Hello, hello. Have you been enjoying all the videos of American literature? Today we have chapter 8. This is the most famous period in American literature. After the revolutionary age, this is the period of the civil war. It is a wonderful age which led to the abolition of slavery. The Civil War, as you might know, was in 1861 to 65 period. What happened? There was in 1860 the inauguration of the president Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln became president of the United States. He had been from a humble background. He had originally been a Whig. Now he had joined the Republican Party and he was the Republican president. He wanted to abolish slavery. This is the time of abolitionism, the movement to abolish slavery. Guys, in the northern states of the United States, there was industrialization, no slavery. But in the southern states, there were plantations and slavery was there. Slavery supported the colonial economy and it continued into this period. So, the northern states wanted to abolish slavery. They were called the Union. And the southern states were called the Confederacy. They wanted slavery. This is the issue on which the civil war started. There were five major battles in the civil war. You must have heard of the Gettysburg address of Abraham Lincoln. That was part of the Battle of Gettysburg. Very famous battle. And uh, the civil war finally led to the fighting between the northern states and the southern states. The southern states submitted to the northern states in April 1865. That is how the civil war ended. After the civil war ended, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by a very famous stage actor, John Wilkes Booth. That was a very sad event that marked the end of the civil war. And after that, or was it before? I'm not sure. The 13th Amendment of the Constitution came. You can check it whether it was before the Civil War or after, immediately before or after, I'm not sure. The 13th Amendment of the American Constitution ended slavery, abolition of slavery came. So this is the brief history of the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln, a man born in 1809, same year as Tennyson, he died in 1865. Now, Abraham Lincoln is important in our net and set. You know why? Because his speeches are prescribed in universities. In our Encyclopedia of uh, Literature of the Americas, Volume 1, in Chapter 8, I have given detailed description of the speeches of Abraham Lincoln. I will just read out which are the important speeches. The first inaugural address of 4th March 1861 is important. The Emancipation Proclamation, January 1863. Then there was the Gettysburg Address, 19th November 1863. These are the major speeches. The Civil War led to the victory of the Union or the uh, northern states, automatically this led to a growth in the industries and in the metropolises, America began to prosper. But the southern states declined in economy. This led to a lot of trouble in the south. Even then, 
the, even after the reconstruction or the attempts to rebuild America, the southern states were degenerating and declining. This is reflected in literature. In American literature, the southern gothic novels of William Faulkner, etc. show the decline of the southern plantation families. Now in the south, even after the civil war, guys, people still continued racism. There was no slavery as such, but the blacks were, uh, were the marginal community. There were the local Jim Crow laws that treated the blacks very badly. It legitimized racial oppression. It was a very bad situation. It took years and years for the blacks to be considered equal in America. Even now, you know the Floyd case, etc. There is still a lot of inequality when it comes to race in the United States. Now, after the Civil War, in the early 20th century, there was something ha that happened. Millions of freed slaves from the South migrated to the North. This is called the Great Migration. Six million black people moved from the American South to, uh, to escape the racial violence as a result of Jim Crow laws. This was a very big event. And this period after the Civil War is the period of realism in America. Who is the greatest figure of realism? Tell me. Everybody knows. He used a pseudonym. That is my clue. Bolo Bolo. It is Mark Twain. Mark Twain was an important realist. Guys, in America, realism, the movement, gave rise to another movement called naturalism. Realism gave rise to naturalism. Realism is depicting life and looking at why people are acting in certain ways. Looking at what lies behind the external facts, the psychological motivation etc. Naturalism is depicting human beings as products of their environment. Human beings are behaving in certain ways. They are like this because of their circumstances. That is what is called naturalism. In America, naturalism flourished. American naturalists are uh, Jack London who wrote Call of the Wild. Stephen Crane who wrote The Red Badge of Courage and the open boat. Then there is Theodore Dreiser who wrote The American Tragedy and also Frank Norris. These are major naturalists. And uh, John W. DeForest, Mark Twain, etc. were the important realists. Shall I tell you about Mark Twain? There is a long, long story of this amazing man. Samuel Langhorne Clements. Oh, I have discussed in detail all the major things that he did and all the major works that he wrote. I will tell you in a nutshell. I won't go into that, all the details which is there in the encyclopedia because he is like a chapter in himself. As all of you know, he lived near Mississippi River and he documented the life around the Mississippi. He is a Mississippi writer from the South. And he wrote a lot of works based on his voyages and his own experiences. Would you like to hear a list of his important works? The Innocence Abroad. Have you heard of that? Important work from 1859. Same year as Charles Darwin's Origin of Species. The Innocence Abroad by Mark Twain. Roughing It is another semi-autobiographical humorous novel. The Gilded Age, it is Mark Twain's first real novel. It is about the end of the 19th century, the 1890s, when everybody was enamored of the guild or the, the, trapping, the, the, the superficial decorations of life. Nobody really cared about what is inside culture. So, it is a satirical novel that shows the corruption of the Gilded Age. Did you understand? That is very important. And he has written 
a lot of memoirs about his Mississippi life. In 1876 came his masterpiece novel. You are thinking Huckleberry Finn. No, before that, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is a sequel to it. Okay, and uh, before Huckleberry Finn came in 1885, or there are other works. Look at this A Tramp Abroad, The Prince and the Pauper. That is a fantasy novel and a satire where. A, a prince and a poor boy are lookalikes. Do you know who is this prince? Edward the Sixth, King Edward the Sixth, who came after King Henry the Eighth in England. So this prince and the pauper are switching their identities. That is the story of the prince and the pauper. Then came Life on the Mississippi, and then Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This is a, an amazing novel, guys. You know why? Because this is a satire on the society. He is making fun of civilization and culture. Huckleberry Finn is a natural boy. He wants to go wild west. He wants to go west and trust his luck. He does not want to live the pretentious life of the civilized people. <laughs> Did you understand? And Huckleberry Finn is a satire on the society, on education, on religion, on slavery. How cruel the white people were to the slaves. And Huckleberry Finn and Jim, an escaped slave, are traveling down the Mississippi River. You can see the life on both sides of the Mississippi River. And finally, Huck is meeting up with Tom Sawyer once again and his aunts. And um, Huck is again attempted to be civilized. He does not want to be civilized. So in this novel, you can see all the archetypal values of American civilization or American culture, such as individualism and the related concept of democracy. You know, the natural man, the very major theme in uh, Huckleberry Finn is nature versus culture. Culture as negative, nature as superior. So this is the, in a nutshell, Huckleberry Finn. Mark Twain was a character writer. He knew how to delineate character. He was very good at it. He was anti-imperialist. He depicted the entire era, the, the society of his time. And he showed very uh, typically American themes like frontier life, uh, anti-slavery theme, the satire on society, these are all uh, typically American themes. So this is why Huckleberry Finn is very famous and important. And following that, there are lots of other works also. Let me tell you a couple of interesting works. One is uh, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court. A Connecticut Yankee. Yankee is a northern uh, man in America. And he is an industrialist and he knows a lot of technology. He is accidentally going to King Arthur's court. And using his technology, he is teaching people new things and he is transforming them. This is a very fantastic and funny satirical novel. Then there is the tragedy of Puddinhead Wilson. That is also very interesting. A white baby and a black baby are transport, uh, transposed. They are uh, interchanged in the antebellum south. That means before the civil war, a white baby and a black baby get exchanged. Somewhat like our midnight's children. <laughs> Did you understand? So these are the important works of um, Mark Twain. And another very important realist of America was... Henry James. He talked about realism a lot in his critical essays and even in his novels you can see the expression of realism. Henry James was an American who traveled to Europe and wrote about it. He was the brother of William James who coined the term stream of consciousness. Guys, Henry James himself wrote interior monologues and his characters are called the center of consciousness. Because everything in the narrative is distilled through the minds of that 
protagonist or that character. It is a limited point of view that Henry James shows in his novels. Now, Henry James's novels include Roderick Hudson, The American. These novels, Daisy Miller, these novels guys are um, typically Henry James novels because they show American culture vis-a-vis -vis European culture. Daisy Miller, very famous is The Portrait of a Lady. The story of Isabel Archer, uh, an American. She travels in Europe. She is married to Gilbert Osmond and he is oppressing her. But she is an American. She is an independent-minded, uh, proto-feminist kind of woman. And you know what happens? At the end, she, maybe she leaves her husband and lives her own life. It is a slightly ambiguous ending, but the suggestion is that she will leave her husband. This is Isabel Archer in the portrait of a lady. Very famous early novel of Henry James. After that, there are many other novels uh, like What May See New, The Wings of the Dove, etc. There is a, a gothic novel that he wrote, The Turn of the Screw, which is very interesting. It is a ghost story. A governess is talking about the ghost of a former employee and two children. They are going to be killed. They are, one of them is killed by this ghost, etc. Chodo, that is not what is important here. What is important here is that after listening to all this ghost story and biting your nails, at the end, the suggestion is that the woman who is telling the story is mad. There is actually uh, an ambiguity there. We don't even know whether this woman really experienced all this, whether there was a ghost, whether this is true. So Henry James is problematizing reality in that uh, short story, The Turn of the Screw. There was a web series in uh, Netflix based on The Turn of the Screw. Have you watched it? Um, the Haunted uh, ha Bly Manor or something like that was the title. I forgot the title. Do you remember? Then the final novel, The Ambassadors. It's a very interesting novel where Lambert Strother, who is a tired man, he is tired of life, he is in his middle age, he has had lots of traumatic things in the past and he is feeling very guilty about it. He is in, uh, engaged to marry an older woman, Mrs. Newsom. Mrs. Newsom doesn't enjoy life and she is the profit-minded American woman and she gets Lambert Strother to go to France and bring back her child, her son. Chad Newsom from France because Chad is having fun with some women in France and uh, Mrs. Newsom does not want him to do that. But Lambert Strother goes to France, to Paris, sees Chad's life, sees Marie de Vionnet, that woman he is in love with and he understands that, come on, Chad is living a full life here. This is beautiful. It is aesthetically so superior to the humdrum life that Lambert Strother is living. He asked Chad to live there and not come home. <gasps> Lambert Strother is actually risking his own life and future because Mrs. Newsom will not marry him now. She is a very rich woman and she is also his boss. He is risking his life and career. But he doesn't mind because he has discovered a new meaning of life. He has changed completely after that Paris trip. This is the story of the ambassadors. Incidentally, uh, Henry James was friends with our <laughs> The Age of Innocence by Eudora Welty. Henry James was friends with Eudora Welty. I was thinking and not able to remember because obviously Henry James is more important. Eudora Welty has written The Age of Innocence, which is like closely modeled on a portrait of a lady. Okay, now the last completed novel of Henry James is The Golden Bowl. It is set in England. It's about a father and his daughter and their spouses and it's a complicated story, very symbolic story. Now Henry James's most interesting Works also include the art of fiction, the famous critical essay where he talks about realism. 
he asserts the importance of novel as a genuine art and the freedom that the novelist should have in writing and uh, henry james's friend percy lubbock wrote the craft of fiction okay henry james has also written a book this craft of art of fiction is a an is an essay that i talked about he has also written art of the novel a book which is actually a collection of critical prefaces now guys in the period of realism in america there are a number of other writers they are discussed uh, in uh, this encyclopedia i will just mention them it is one is o henry the short story writer who wrote the gift of the magi the cop and the anthem the last leaf and uh, short stories like that then there is uh, the series of novels based on the civil war they are also realistic very important is margaret mitchell's famous novel gone with the wind margaret mitchell's one famous novel gone with the wind became a very famous movie it is the story of scarlet o'hara who is growing who is developing from an immature young girl into a mature strong woman and she is discovering true love you know at first she was infatuated with her cousin but later she discovers her true love red butler who rejects her he doesn't love her but she is a strong woman a mature woman it's a beautiful character so that brings us to the end of this amazing period of realism in american literature there is a lot that you should read on your own research on your own make notes and become an expert in this field because you may get questions in net and set and other exams and also because you will become an amazing teacher if you know all these works properly so with that i'm signing off i'll be back with chapter 9 early feminist writers in the next video bye bye